Hi, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Heather. I'm also known as the Mommy Potamus. Today I'm going to share with you a simple technique for making bone broth in your crock pot. Now, everybody has their different definition of what a superfood is. But to me, broth is one of the ultimate superfoods. It's rich in minerals that are easily absorbed by the body. It's got glucosamine, which is great for the joints. And it's also rich in gelatin, which is soothing for the digestive tract and it's great for hair, skin, and nails. Now, I don't know about you, but I try to get as much done in the kitchen as possible in the least amount of time, especially when I have a human being strapped to my chest. So um, I do try to get this made about twice a week and I've worked out a system that makes it really simple and uh, kind of blends with the rest of my routine so that I don't have to think about it too much. Here is my process. Now, once or twice a week, I roast a chicken. And after dinner, after I've removed all of the meat and put it in the fridge, I take the chicken bones and I put them in the crock pot. Hello. I also add all the juices uh, that came with the chicken. And then I cover the chicken completely with water. Now this is about a pound of chicken. So I'm going to add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And the reason I do this is that uh, increasing the acidity of the water helps pull out more of the minerals from the chicken bones. Now I'm going to add a few veggie scraps for flavor. Got some celery, some carrot, and some onion. Oops. Hi there, you woke up. And I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of salt and about half a teaspoon of peppercorns. Whoa, not sure how much that was. All right, and now I'm gonna add about half a teaspoon of peppercorns. And I'm going to set this to low. Ooh, did I get it? And I'm going to let this cook for eight to 10 hours. So it's morning and my broth has been simmering for a little more than 10 hours and it's time to strain it. So usually I have a large bowl and a fine mesh sieve, but my sieve is broken, so I'll be using a colander today. And uh, I just use a heat-proof measuring cup or a ladle to ladle the broth into the bowl. Now I've laid a little bit of cheesecloth over the bottom here just to kind of strain out the finer parts. And I forgot to mention this, but you will want to turn off your crock pot before you begin transferring the liquid to the bowl. Now I've got everything transferred over, so I'm going to discard my scraps. And I'm going to transfer the broth to a jar. Now here's a little tip I've learned along the way. When I first started storing my broth in the freezer, my jars broke a lot. And what I've learned is that water and substances that contain a lot of water actually expand while frozen, while most things actually contract. So what I have found is that if I leave a big gap at the top of my jar, um, it allows room for when the liquid expands and the jar contracts slightly for there to be a little bit of give. And that has allowed me to store these in my freezer without them breaking. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen today. If you have any suggestions for topics that we should cover in this basic series, please leave a comment below.